Hey, uh, YouTubers, Tazman here, bringing you another episode of Taz Teaches Java. And uh, in the last episode, we were talking about operators, and I kind of confused myself and a complete brain fart. Um, but I, I, I was just being dumb. Uh, so I read out, I got more information on the instance of operator, which tells you whether something is an instance of a, a, a class is an instance or a variable or type or whatever is an instance of another one uh, of a class or something like that. And we're going to explain that. And then the other thing was with the remainder of the modulus, uh, remember how we did, uh, I think we did, whoops, we did two modulus three and it kept returning back one, which is correct. I was just being weird because this is the remainder. So if we actually did this and said two and then divided by three here, we would get, it goes into it one time. That gives us two, that leaves us with one. So here we have one, one whole one, and then we have one over two, which is your one over two here. Now, if we turn this into a decimal, we would end up with the 1.50, which is what I was expecting. I was expecting the remainder to give us back five for some weird reason. So that's why we were getting back one because the remainder was one. So hopefully that makes that a more, more clear. So when you do modulus, all you're gonna get back is what a remainder is. Now, if we did something like two divided by four, right? We would get two here, we get four here and we would have zero for a remainder. Therefore, we wouldn't get back a remainder. So this is a good way to be able to tell if uh, the number that you're looking at is positive, or uh, is even or odd, because if it's even, you're always going to get back a zero if you divide by two. If it's odd, you're gonna get a one or something else when it, uh, anytime it's odd. So you could always do a check with your if. We could say if, whoops, if and then parenthesis we could say uh well let's just use our numbers here and say if um blah, 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 two modulus three now this would be stupid because it always comes back as as uh, false so as you can see here two modulus three equals equals zero then we would go whoop, whoop, <laughs> ugly brace then we would simply say your number is true. Uh, if, it's, if it doesn't come back as zero, then it would do the second half. So hopefully that makes more sense about that. I just wanted to clear that up. I was just being kind of dumb, ex expecting it to, you know, do something like, oh, well, if I keep going, which, which we could. We could, you know, do where you do the zero here, zero here, add a decimal there, and now we go two into 10, which goes five times 10, and now we get zero. So that gives us our 1.5, which is what I was, I was expecting it to grab this instead. But like I said, no biggie. Uh, it was doing it right. Of course it was. Programming doesn't do it wrong. It's the operator error always. So the next thing I want to talk about really quick is uh, our operators here. And um, we're going to create a new class. We're just going to call it animal to help make this more drive at home here. So A N I M A L. We'll just say animals and say finish. So here's our new class. Now, just so you know, generally when programming stuff, you always have a class in its own file. And then the file name will actually be the name of the class.java. And then you have it here. However, you can, if you don't mark it as public, uh, you can actually have multiple classes in a single class. So we could actually also say, uh, whoops, class and maybe dog. Uh, and do I want to do the other part now? Let's not do that just yet. And then this, whoops, this one's going to be a blank class. We're not going to add anything in it because we don't need anything in it uh, Why we are are doing what we're doing. And we're also going to add one class and cat. Oops, <laughs> and I can't hit my brackets. I can't hit them at all. It's dark in, in this room that I'm recording. Maybe I should turn on this light. 
so I can see just a little better. Okay, so here we have a class dog, class cat, and then we have this master class here that's the actual class of the, the file that we have called uh, class animals. So what we would want to do is, let's see, so if we create, how should I do this? So if we go A N I M A animal and say my A N I M A L, let's just call it my animal, and we're gonna create. So we're creating a new animal that's just a my animal, and it will be um, new A N I M A L like that. So this creates a new animal class. Now one thing you can see here is because it's, oh animals sorry there we go that should fix it all better hits happy and then we're gonna create maybe a dog called my dog and say equals new and like I've, I've said before if there's parts of this that you're seeing you don't understand that's okay we're going to be covering them sooner more than later so it won't be too long before you understand all this stuff and this is a new dog, so there we go. And then let's just do a cat maybe, and do my cat equals new uh, cat. Oops, car, a car. We're doing a car. Okay, so here we have three uh, types. So this one is of the type or of the class or object is animals. This one is an object's dog, and this is object's cat. So if we want to check, and this is where we can check the um, uh, instance of. So we could do s out and have it give us our thing. There we go. Whoops, I did wrong. Do that again. s out. There we go. Wait, why is it doing that? Oh, I know why it's doing that. I forgot to do something. <laughs> I'm, I'm a silly person. So let's do a main first. We have to have it in our main uh, method. M-A-I-N. I should just give up and not do this today. So if we do this, get rid of that and put it down here instead. Now this stuff is part of the main method. And then we can tab this stuff in and maybe get rid of like that. Okay. And then tab you in. So here where you can see we have these. Now if I do an S out, it's actually going to S out. It'll actually do what we're expecting right there. We don't need a method S out uh, because it's already defined. Because it's, I don't, I can't <laughs> explain that. But that's off subject anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to say is, uh, let's see, let's say is my, my dog an uh, animal maybe? A-N-I-M-A-L. I'm going to say animals. I'll just say animal. Now this is where we can do the plus, uh, yeah, the plus, and we can do, um, Let's do it in parentheses just so it locks it up together. And we can say my dog I N S T A N C instance of whoops. Is it uppercase? No. Of uh, not faux. Of and A N I animals. So here you can see right now we can tell instantly that this has an issue because it says incompatible. And the reason we're seeing this is because, and I can't remember if we talked about it, but in order for this, we have to have a relation between these two. So we have to extend animals. E-X-T-E-N-D-S. Extends. A-N-I-M-A-L-S. So if we do extends animals, now it's going to be happy. And if we run this, we shall see. It's wondering which one we should run. We shall see that if we save it and it runs, 
you'll see my dog is an animal because dog extends animal, right? So now let's check, uh, is my dog a dog maybe? Let's make sure our dog is actually part of the dog class. So I'm just gonna do a quick copy here and do C and then a V, like a show. <coughs> so is my dog and or A, I don't know, we don't have to be all grammatically correct, I guess. Dog, right? And then we could come here and say dog. Whoops, like that. And if we run this, we should also get a second true because my dog is a dog. But if we say, is my dog a cat? Well, then we should get a fail. Uh, let's do this. Do, 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 do. C and V. And let's say a cat. And you'll see it automatically, instantly starts failing here. Um, because my dog obviously isn't a cat and it's going to say incompatible types or incompatible conditional operand type dog and cat. So they're not friends with each other. Now let's try this. E -X -T -E -N -D -S and a and I, even though a cat is an animal, animals like that, this isn't going to satisfy this because my dog does not extend uh, the cat instance. And you can only extend or be related to one thing. I can't be related to multiple. Now animals could be related to something else because there is actually um, a master thing a master class called object and everything is the uh, is related or extends from that so like if we actually change this like object cat <sighs> o -B -J -C, object which is the main class of that's one that they it's built in uh, so let's just try this now. So we have my dog dog. We're going to unextend this real quick. And let's just continue on my dog dog. Okay, so I'm just looking at my notes real quick. I'm just going to cut and paste this stuff just so we can do it a lot quicker from my notes. So we're going to go here and hit V. So here we're going to check. We're going to go ahead and just get rid of this guy because he's bad. Bad. Okay. So let me just verify I have everything the way I want it. Animal, my animal. Dog, my dog. Cat, my cat. So like I said, this object is a built-in class of, of Java. And you could actually, uh, I don't know if this will actually let us drill into it. No, it doesn't look like it's going to let us. But uh, maybe at one point I'm going to show you how you can actually see where all these these are. So as you can see here, we have um, animal instance of animal. Oh, we need S. I, I changed it to S at the last minute. <laughs> okay, so here we have, let's go ahead and just run this. And you'll see that... First of all, we have my dog is an animal, which is true. My dog is a dog, which is true. My animal is an animal, which is true. My animal is a dog. So animals is not extending. It's not uh, inheriting from dog. It's the other way around. Therefore, an animal isn't necessarily a dog. It could be lots of different things. And as you can see here, my cat is an animal. It says false because cat is not extending animals. It's going directly to the object. And we can also see my cat is not a dog because it's not extending that. Now if we did extends dog, that would mean a cat would inherit everything a dog has, which also it inherits everything an animal has, and so on and so forth. So you would actually see um, that. And maybe, let's try this. E X T E N T extends dog. So we do this and now we run it. I believe this last one should say a cat is a dog. 
So there you go, my cat is a dog because it extends it. You'll also see now, because my dog is an animal, my cat all of a sudden became an animal too because a dog inherits everything animal has. Therefore, cat inherits everything dog has, which includes the extension or the relationship as an animal. So if that didn't confuse you enough, then I'm not doing my job because that is thoroughly confusing if you ask me. So that's kind of what I wanted to uh, talk about. The next thing I wanted to, so that's the clarification on those last things we did. So we're going to go ahead and close this guy. So now we're getting into the stuff like I talked about last time that we're going to get into how you, hmm, do I have time? Yeah, I guess we have time. This might be a long episode. I know that. That seems to happen like every other time. Oh, and all I have left in my water is ice now going to be tough um, so what we want to do is we want to look at decisions so I'm going to create maybe just a package here called decision let's do new package and let's call it decision D E C I S I O N and inside here hmm do I, maybe I'll keep it decisions I'll make a class and this will be D E C I S I O N just to make it clear. So here we have our class, and this time, before I forget, I'm gonna go ahead and do main, and control enter to get my main method. And go ahead and delete this, there we go. So what we're gonna talk about in decisions, and this is something we do every single day, subconsciously, we're probably doing it thousands upon thousands of times a day. But a decision is where we simply evaluate something. We say, do I do this or do I do this? And there's a condition always related to that. Now in programming, we use what's called an if statement um, to decide this. In, in our heads, we're actually kind of doing the same thing. And we talked about this just a little bit, you know. If it's sunny outside, wear shorts. If it's cold outside, wear a coat. If it's raining outside, wear a raincoat, right? So let's go ahead and look at, is this the one I wanna use? So let's kind of look at what this is. So like I was calling, uh, this is called an if statement or an if then statement. So this is called if then. And the way it's formatted is you have if, and then we have our parentheses for our condition. I wonder if I could, let's see if we can do this. So we have our if, then, whoops, I keep. Then right here we have our condition. Our condition, right, goes inside the parentheses. Let's do this. And let's just say if, for example, if, sunny right s u n n y so if it's sunny outside and this doesn't have to be just a single thing this returns true or false a condition always returns a single value of true or false i couldn't say if four plus three because that's not a condition i'm not checking if four plus three is true or false. In fact, you can't evaluate four plus three saying it's true or false. I could say is four equal to three, and then it would be true. Or I could say is four greater than three, which would be true. Or I could say is four less than three, and that would be false, right? So uh, and the condition, generally in any type of thing that has a condition, will either return true or false. And it's just like in algebra, where it kind of you know, it, it has its, uh, uh, not preference, it has, <laughs> what is the word I'm looking for? Things that take precedence over, over each other. Just like in math, you know, like multiplication, division, take precedence over addition, subtraction. And it's the same thing here, even with the, down to the parentheses. So we could say if it's sunny, and then we start a block of code to tell us if it's true, we would do this and we go one, two here. So this is the condition if it's true. If true, we do this. 
If it's not true, we don't do anything, right? At least so far, we don't do anything. We will do something in a bit. <laughs> so, whoops, let's go ahead and delete that one and go ahead, line this all up nicely. So if it's true, then we execute some code. So here we would say run uh, some commands. If it's false, like I said, that's a different uh, different type of a statement. So let's go ahead and just check this out. Let's let's create something here and say uh, first we have to decide. Let's go B O L E A N. We're gonna say boolean and we're gonna say is sunny right so this is going to tell us if it's sunny and we're going to pretend that yes it is tr oops i didn't need to delete that and we're setting it to true then we're going to do our if statement we're going to say uh let's see so it, uh we don't need to say if is s-u-n-n-y now this doesn't have to uh do any kind of operations on it because sunny is a boolean it's already at its simplest form which is true or false so we don't have to do anything then we do that and then we can say uh, s out and say something like yes it's sunny outside right so we can do that now if we run this, you'll see it says, yes, it's sunny outside. If I change this to false and run it, nothing happens because we don't have anything happening if it's false. Now if we came out here and we said something else, we could say V and then say, darn it, it's too cold or something like that. Uh, let's see, darn it, it's too cold for fun. That's not true. So there we go. So if I run this, this statement is not related to this one at all because this is the whole if statement. Now, this means when I run this, it's both gonna say, yes, it's sunny, or and darn it's cold, it's too cold for fun. If I said this true, if I set it to false, we're only going to see the one and you're going to think, oh yeah, my program's working perfect. So as you can see, darn it, it's too cold for fun. This is what we were talking, didn't we talk about errors? I can't remember, I think we did. This would be called a logical error because right now we expect it to do that. However, when we run it with true, now we're expecting it only to run this, but we're actually going to get both of them. So therefore, it ends up being a logical error because it can't be, yay, it's sunny outside and darn, it's too cold for fun. So that brings us to our next uh, part of an if statement. It's called the if then, right? Let me just make sure I'm getting everything, or not the if then, this is the if then else. So all this really does is it's the exact same thing except we would type else right here and then we would have our second condition. Uh, let's go ahead and do dash dash and dash dash. So this is, hmm, how should I, I'm just gonna not, if then, let's just call this if then statement. I don't wanna have just tons and tons of, this is gonna include everything. So we have our is, if else now if then else and of course it also needs to have a termination so that's the end of its block of code so if we simply say else here ELSE we do our open bracket and then on the other side of this uh, whoops wrong thing there we go whoops S whoops the other S so now if we run this, we have a condition. It's gonna say, if it's sunny, then it's gonna run this. If this evaluates to false, it's gonna run this. Never will it run both of them together. So now if we run this, 
we'll see yes it's sunny outside and false we'll get darn it's too cold for fun so hopefully that kind of makes sense to you uh, if not be sure to leave some comments down below and uh, I'll be sure to uh, try and clarify for you so I'm just trying to space that this is the condition underneath and this would be uh, ISS is sunny so there we go uh, and then this of course would be run some other commands and we're actually even going to change this just a little bit more to make it a little more clear run some commands if false and this will be if true and you need to be spaced one more I think. oh wait this whole oh this was my thing saying okay we can get rid of this guy then <laughs> I'm like why does that say if up there okay so there we go that's right that's right this guy I think is tab too many right because it's one two okay so there you go there's the if and the if el uh, the if then and the if then else now there's another one that is kind of like the if else if and it's similar to the if else but let's say for example this is called nesting a nested if is when we have an if that kind of leads into another if now we could also have an if statement inside of here which is also nesting uh, maybe it's probably more proper way of saying nesting I'm not sure but let's go ahead and talk about this next one which would be let's just do else if here and then we could have our condition actually maybe I don't want to do it here <laughs> let's just leave that there so I'm not going to continue this you'll be able to see it from here so this is I'm just going to simply say this is the if whoops the fee the if L, uh, L, else if, E, L, E, L, S, E, if, and else. Now it's important to know that just because I have another else if, I don't actually have to have an else at the end, but if my first and second, and you can have as many of these else ifs if you want, uh, that you want, and it will be fine. In fact, I'm gonna once again just to save time because we're already at 27 minutes, and I just want to kind of get through the if statements a little better. Um, I'm gonna copy and paste some some code that I wrote earlier. So what I'm gonna do here, oh, I don't want that part. Let's do this. And you're gonna see now because I'm copying and pasting this, we're gonna see some of uh, our imports happen up here. I don't remember if we talked much about that, but we will later if we haven't. So now, actually, I guess it didn't do it right. So let's go ahead and do it here. We'll go ahead and import that one. I think that's all. No, I need this one to import too. And I want this from util. So now we have our two imports up here now. So what this is, is this is an if, uh, if else if else statement. Okay, and like I said, you don't have to have this final this final one here. But what this is going to do is this guy will this right here grabs the date, and I'm telling it just to grab it the hour hour. I'm just getting the first two digits, or you know, it would be a zero one for in the morning, you know, one zero for ten in the morning, and because these two are uppercase, that means it's 24 hours. So. For example, right now I'm looking at my clock, it's 3.43, which would be 15.43 military time. So this would return 15 for us. What it's going to do is, this right here is, we're setting, um, where is it right here? We're setting a variable, our variable called str for string, and it's going to assign the date to that string. So first we're assigning the number from our date here then we're creating a string and we're putting that new date basically in here we're setting it up then we're gonna parse the in, we're gonna parse this 
to an integer because we want it to be an actual number and not a string and then we're going to do our checking against it so here we're saying if and this integer parse int is basically what's turning it into an integer so basically what we're saying here is our string or the value less than 10 this would mean that it's before 10 a.m. right so we would get good morning in that case or we could say um, if that's not true it'll move on to the next one it'll say else if our value is less than 15 well it's 344 right now that's 15 so this one would also evaluate to false because it doesn't say less than equal to it's just less than so 15 is not less than 15 so now we would if if it were less than that then it would output good afternoon and finally well not finally we have if it's less than 19 well 15 is less than 19 so our string will be true here so it's going to output good evening and then our final thing if none of these are true that means it must be after 19 or 19 or later uh, and so we would get good night so if we run this guy uh, let's go ahead and say save we'll get our darn it's too cold for fun right oops forgot to run and then we get good evening because that's how it evaluated so 15 is uh, not less than 15 so we got this one and it went ahead and did that now if we wanted to force this and pretend it was a different time we could actually say str uh, equals and we need to have it a string because we're parsing our string into an integer so if we said this and just ignore all that we could say okay well let's pretend it is 4 in the morning right 4 a.m. so if we run this we should get good morning so there you go good morning uh, if we say that it's 10 o'clock we should get good afternoon so let's save that and run it you'll see we got good afternoon if we did well we've already done that but let's say uh, the time is 19 or 20 even it's it's the evening now it's pretty late 20 is uh, so here we go if we run it now we get good night because this evaluated to false this one evaluated to false this one evaluated to false and the, then this one did now one bad thing about the if statement it can get pretty big I mean, as you can see this gets pretty ugly if we wanted to convert this whole thing into a much nicer thing they've also created something called the switch statement and basically with the switch statement you just take your value and let's just do this so this let's see let's just do this and say SWIT switch statement statement and we need to put it on our parentheses there so this is a switch statement and this is a way of kind of cleaning up how messy the if if else if else or else if else if and all that can be but it basically does the exact same thing so the way you do it is you type SWIT CH and then you have your condition so switch in this case our condition that we're looking at it actually this isn't so much the condition but this is what you're looking at so here we would want to say str right and in fact we could even do the integer parse str and make it just a little bit better for us so do v there put a parenthesis there and a parenthesis oops we, yeah there we go oops it didn't like and the close parenthesis there so this is the switch statement and it's just like an if statement however instead we just say what we're going to be evaluating and then we give it cases in case it's this so here's our switch we want to say case uh, case and we want to say our value so we would say uh, less than 10 right whoops this needs a colon I think is that where I put no I don't put the colon there the colon goes whoops I'm hitting every key except the one I want so we'd say case less than 10 
do I have to? Oh, I'm, I think this has to be in parentheses because it's a. Uh, Maybe I have to put, generally, let's try this. String less than 10. No, because then it's getting this. Let's do this. Let's call, um, let's do H-O-U-R, H-O. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. I'm, I'm doing the same thing that I was the other day. Uh, uh, let's just call this int, int, hour, and we'll just do this. Control X. We'll do equals and B. Then we can just say hour here. So we could say what this was doing is in here we were converting it to a, a integer, but down here it's not an integer. So we are still failing because we're trying to convert string to integer. But here what we're doing is we're taking our string, which is the value up there, str, we're calling it hour. So now we can even just say hour here. And we could have done this up here with, we could have done the same thing up here and instead compared hour. But uh, let's just do this, H-O-U-R. Let's see if that works right. Type mismatch, a boolean. See, because this needs to be I'm drawing a complete blank right now on my switch statement. Do, do, do. Maybe this would be a good time to go look at um, go look at how you find this information out for yourself. I think so, because I don't know why I'm drawing a blank, but I am. Hour oh, 36 minutes. Uh, let me just fix, fit this window in here for us. Hour right there. Okay, and let's go ahead and just look up Java S W I T switch S T A T E M N G. So right here, this docs Oracle, these are the main docs for it. This is the official Oracle's the one that does it. So as you can see, oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so no, that's not what I'm doing wrong. I want to do which is that I can't do actually oh I had a different example for this yeah switch can't do the evaluation I forgot about that so in this case we're looking at month right so this is saying month is two the years 2000 number of days is zero um, and as you can see here they're doing the switch they're evaluating month which is two so it's it can't it can't actually evaluate greater than less than you could say case one which means uh, it would be if it's one if I wanted to do something like we were doing with the hour thing uh, what I'd have to do is do case one case two case three case four case all the way up to the one that I want so this will say if any of these are true actually if any of these are true then it's going to say the number of days is 31 um, if these are true so if you look at these as the month this was January not February uh, March May July August October and then December and then here we have uh, April June uh, September and November uh, then it's showing you that there's 31 days or there's 30 days and then it has a case if it's case 2 which would be February then it would check the year uh, do the modulus of 4 uh, this is kind of complex and it would tell you whether it's the 28 days if it's leap year or not so that's that's I'm drawing a total blank here so we in order to do the way we're looking here where we're saying greater than less than if we had a very static value we could do it easily with the case statement but uh, in this case we would have to say case one uh, and we had up to nine so we would do case one 
case two, colon, case three, case four, case five. Um, and you could do these in line, but they, they're showing you doing them. Let's do V, V. Uh, so that's what, <laughs> this could take a bit longer. So in this case, a case statement is not your best option. And we got K six, seven, and eight. And we just need the one more. And nine. So this would all be good morning. So if that's true, if any, if it's any of these values, then it would say those are true. Um, because we're just evaluating the hour to be equal to this. So then we would say our good morning, and I'm just gonna do this. Now the thing with the case statement is you want to make sure that you type break after each one. In other words, it will actually evaluate them all. So, so we do a break here, and then we would do our second batch of cases, which would be from 10 to 15, which is five. So let's just grab this. And we can just add zeros to the end. So we go 10. Oh, I guess not. Oh, actually, that'd be. Uh, we still could do it. Let's just do this. <laughs> Case 10. And then this guy right here would be 11 and 12 and 13. 14 and then we got to get rid of you so this would be our next one which is control C there control V and we could say doo, 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 which one are you good afternoon just like that and then we would do our next set and this is from 15 to 19, so it's not very many. We'll just grab this whole thing again. Actually, let's just grab the whole shebang and paste it right here. And we'll say, what is this? This is 14, so this is 15, oh, the other 15, 16, 17, 18, and we wouldn't have 19 because it said less than. So this is actually a terrible one to convert to a case. It's much less complex here, but that's not always the case. Now, just like the final else that we have up here, we can also do the same thing with the case. We just, it's called case default. So we would do this and we would type case D-E-F-A-U-L-T. In one of our F-A, LT. In one of our other videos, we'll actually do case statements and they'll make a lot more sense. And this would be the good night. And then we don't need a break here because it's already at the end. So if we ran this and let's just do this and instead of parsing that, let's just have this be an integer already and let's just call it, uh, so what were we saying? If it's nine, it should be morning. So run this. Oops, I have an error. Where's my error? Okay. Oh, actually it's not case default. It's just default. <laughs> okay. So now if we run this, we say good evening because this is actually checking the time. This is looking at our simulated time, which is nine. So it's saying good morning. If we do this one, which will be, uh, we want 14 to be just under that guy. You'll see now that we get a good afternoon. And then we can do this one, which is 18, will give us And there's our good evening again, because that's the 15 falls under that case as well as this one. And then finally, if we went one higher to 19 and ran it, we'd get good night. Now, 
this is the default. So this means if I even did a negative number in here, uh, whoops, I, my num lock's not on, like 236 or something like that. If I did that, I'm still going to get good night because it's going to evaluate that it's saying, well, it's not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's not 10, 11, 12. It's not 15, 16, 17, 18. So if I really wanted to be good about this, I could actually put 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and then have a case default saying, uh, that's not a real time or something like that. We're not going to do that because we're already at 45 minutes, and I apologize for the uh, derpiness uh, on some of this on the switch statement. I don't know why I was drawing a blank, but hopefully you understand these things. If you do or if you don't, leave comments down below. I will check them and uh, try and uh, explain it better for you. And. Um, use when in doubt always use the docs oracle this is uh well actually i think if you just do java api api you can get everything yeah so this is the full java api this is for seven if you wanted eight or whatever this shows you every little thing you can do basically so if we came down here and went to uh, we've used random before. Let's go. Let's go find random real quick. So come down here. I'm going to P Q P P P P P. So if we come in here to read only. There's random right there. You can see that in order to use it, you need to import Java Util Random. Um, it shows you a quick little thing on how to use it down here. Uh, da, da, da. Where's the examples? Random. So here's a little example. So this is the thing. This is what is saying the type it is or the class it is. This is what we're calling it, and this is what generates our thing as a RND as a random object. Then we can just simply do RND set seed, something like that. Um, but you can also do things where you just tell it to give you a number between whatever and whatever. So hopefully this was good for you also to learn a little bit about that and it helps you understand, hey, there's places I can go to get this information. Um, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Discord and my other channels. And uh, that's it. Until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.